What if one of America's greatest rivers, the force that feeds cities, powers farms and drives the nation's economy, is quietly preparing to change its path? As we prepare for the opening of the Morganza Spillway next week now, meteorologist Eric Zernick takes a look at how river levels along the Mississippi got so high to begin with. What if one of the most important rivers in America, a river that feeds cities, fuels industries, powers farms and carries the heart of the nation's economy, is quietly preparing to abandon its course? What if the Mississippi River, the father of waters, is about to rewrite the map? For centuries, the Mississippi has shaped the land, carving valleys, building deltas and feeding wetlands. But rivers are living things. They wander. They shift, they break free. And now, all the signs point to something extraordinary. The Mississippi is trying to change direction. Not slowly, not over centuries. Now, in real time. Deep in Louisiana, where the Mississippi runs slow and wide, a second river, the Atchafalaya, has begun to steal its water. Satellites show new channels forming. Levees groan under pressure. Land is sinking, wetlands are collapsing, and scientists are asking a question that could shake America's core. What happens if the Mississippi abandons its current path overnight? Because if it does, everything changes. Ships, farms, cities, ports, energy, the economy. The United States depends on a river that is already trying to leave. Chapter 1 Mississippi River. The shift begins. The Mississippi River we know today is not natural. For thousands of years, the river shifted constantly, jumping courses during major floods, carving new channels, leaving old ones dry. This is how the Mississippi built the entire Louisiana Delta, by wandering, depositing sediment, and creating the wetlands that protect the Gulf Coast. But in the 20th century, we stopped the river. Massive levees were built from Illinois to Louisiana, forcing the Mississippi to stay in a fixed position. The goal was simple, protect farms, towns, and the shipping route to New Orleans. But the river is powerful, and it never accepted the deal. Every flood season, the Mississippi pushes against the levees, searching for weaknesses. Every high water surge sends enormous pressure toward a single point, a place where two rivers meet, the old river control structure. This is the gate that keeps the Mississippi flowing toward Baton Rouge and New Orleans, instead of turning west into the Atchafalaya River. Without it, the Mississippi would already have shifted. The river wants out, and the gate is the only thing stopping it. But gates break, and water waits forever. Chapter 2 Mississippi River The Atchafalaya Pool The Atchafalaya River is shorter, steeper, and faster than the Mississippi. Water always chooses the easiest path. If the Mississippi switches into the Atchafalaya, the new route to the Gulf would be 150 miles shorter, a direct downhill run to the sea. Nature prefers this path. The US Army Corps of Engineers knows this. That's why, in 1963, they built the Old River Control Structure, a massive concrete fortress designed to force 70% of the Mississippi's flow down its current channel, and 30% down the Atchafalaya. But the structure has nearly failed multiple times. In 1973, floodwaters nearly ripped the control structure apart. Engineers described the vibrations as if the river was trying to eat its way through the walls. For a moment, the Mississippi had almost broken free, and history would have changed overnight. But the structure was patched, reinforced, strengthened, yet the cracks are back. INSAR satellite scans from 2024 to 2025 show ground subsidence near the structure. The earth beneath it is sinking. The walls are under strain again. The river is testing the gate. And one day, one flood, one storm surge, one thaw season will be the day the Mississippi wins. Chapter 3 Mississippi River Cities in Jeopardy If the Mississippi changes its course, the world changes with it. New Orleans would lose the river. 
Without the flow, the city's drinking water, economy and shipping lifeline would collapse. Baton Rouge, same fate. No river, no port, no industry. Oil refineries, stranded. Chemical plants, cut off. Cargo terminals, abandoned. The region known as the River Industrial Corridor, responsible for nearly 20% of US oil refining capacity, would go silent. Meanwhile, Morgan City, a small coastal town along the Atchafalaya, would become the new head of America's largest shipping waterway overnight. A quiet fishing town becoming the new New Orleans. A major US port erased. A new one, born instantly. The geopolitical shock would be enormous. This isn't just geography. Chapter 4 Mississippi River Sinking Delta The Mississippi River was never meant to stay confined. When it wandered, it built the land. Every flood season, it carried fresh sediment into the wetlands, rebuilding the delta like a living, breathing organism. The coastline grew, marshes flourished, wildlife thrived. But when we forced the river into one narrow channel, we broke the system. Today, Louisiana loses a football field of coastline every 34 minutes. Not metaphorically, literally. Entire forests now stand dead in open water. Former neighborhoods sit beneath shallow waves. Ile de Jean Charles is already gone. Pointe aux Chiennes is disappearing. Delacroix has nearly drowned beneath the tide. Entire indigenous and fishing communities have been forced to relocate. Not because of war, not because of fire, but because the ground itself simply vanished beneath them. These are not ghost towns from distant history. These are places lost in the last 20 years. Places that were alive, real, full of families, now swallowed by the sea. Highways disappear into the gulf. Graveyards sink, towns retreat. Why? Because the sediment that once replenished the delta is now trapped upriver, locked behind levees designed to stop flooding. The wetlands, deprived of fresh mud, are collapsing under their own weight, sinking into the sea. And there's another force making it worse, saltwater intrusion. As the land sinks, the gulf pushes inland, marsh becomes brackish, freshwater swamps turn to saltwater pools, Trees turn white, then grey, then skeletal stumps. The ecosystem is dying from the inside out. Here's the part no one wants to say out loud. If the Mississippi River did break into the Atchafalaya, the delta would begin rebuilding itself, naturally. Wetlands would grow again. Barrier islands could reform. Storm protection would return. So we face an impossible paradox. Stopping the river protects cities, but destroys the coast. Allowing the river to move destroys cities, but restores the coast. Either way, something big is going to be sacrificed, and the river is getting impatient. Chapter 5 Mississippi River – One Trigger Away The Mississippi does not need a catastrophe to break free. It only needs a moment. The old river control structure is holding back a force stronger than any dam in North America. It is the most strategically important hydraulic choke point in the United States, but it was built in the early 1960s. It was not designed for today's floods. Floods are higher, storms are stronger, snowmelt is faster, river pressure is greater, and the gulf is rising. The system is stressed from both sides. Engineers know this. They've known for years. They even have a phrase for the Mississippi's attempted escape. The capture scenario. Capture, meaning the Atchafalaya captures the Mississippi and becomes the dominant river overnight. What could trigger it? One historic flood season. One storm surge event pushing upstream. One failure in a levee chain. One structural crack spreading under pressure. Or simply, time. Because concrete ages. Earth shifts. Water always wins. And if the river jumps, Baton Rouge and New Orleans lose the Mississippi within hours. The river does not gradually drift. It surges toward the new channel. 
the one it has been trying to take for 80 years. Emergency engineers estimate if the old river control structure fails for just 48 hours, the shift becomes permanent. Two days. That's all it would take to change the geography of the United States. Two days to redraw every map. Two days to rewrite the fate of an entire region. Two days before millions wake up to a river that is gone. This is not imagination. This is the path the river is already leaning toward. Chapter 6 Mississippi River Signs in Motion The signs are not hidden. They are not subtle. They are not theoretical. They are visible. They are measurable. They are happening now. New channels, crevasses, are forming along the Mississippi's western banks. Erosion is accelerating at Old River. The Atchafalaya is deepening rapidly, without dredging. Side channels that were dry 20 years ago now run year-round. River gauges show pressure shifting westward. Nature is preparing the pathway. This is not speculation. It is data. NASA's INSAR ground deformation scans show subtle subsidence and strain along the levee system north of Baton Rouge. Now our coastal models show rapid saltwater movement creeping upstream each summer. Sea hydrologic simulations predict that by the late 2020s, the old river system will require constant emergency intervention to maintain control. Even the riverboats know. Pilots report that the Mississippi leans differently, currents behaving like a rope pulled sideways. Local fishermen say the water feels faster. Indigenous elders say the river is remembering. Civil engineers call it inevitable. Nature calls it correction. And the river itself is sending a clear message. It is no longer waiting. It is choosing. We are simply watching it happen, slowly enough to ignore until the moment everything shifts. Chapter 7 Mississippi River We've seen this before This is not the first time the Mississippi has tried to break loose, and every time it happened, humans responded the same way. We panicked, rebuilt, and pretended it would never happen again. The most dramatic warning came in 1927, the year the river swallowed the south. Levees burst, towns disappeared, thousands drowned, Hundreds of thousands became refugees. It remains the most destructive river flood in US history. The Mississippi didn't just rise, it shifted. It searched for a new pathway. Farmers, engineers, and the US Army Corps of Engineers watched helplessly as the river carved new channels across farmlands and cotton fields, and it almost switched entirely into the Atchafalaya even then, decades before the old river control structure was built. That flood was a warning. Then came 1973, a flood so violent that engineers feared the Mississippi had finally decided to break free for good. The old river control structure shook so hard that the concrete walls developed internal fractures. The river was physically lifting the structure from beneath. They managed to save it. Barely. But what did we do afterward? We patched the cracks. We reinforced the steel. We rebuilt the levees, taller this time and we told ourselves, this time, it will hold. Yet the river has never stopped pushing. It has never accepted its imprisonment. The Mississippi remembers every flood it has ever taken, every shortcut it has ever attempted, every valley it once carved. And now it is preparing to try again, because history does not repeat itself. History waits, and when we ignore it, it returns. Chapter 8. Mississippi River Farms on the line. The Mississippi is not just a river. It is an artery of agriculture. It irrigates the fields, feeds the soil, stabilizes the groundwater, and carries the harvest to market. When people talk about the Mississippi shifting course, they imagine water moving. What they don't realize is, the entire food system moves with it. If the Mississippi jumps into the Atchafalaya, some areas will flood beyond recovery. Others will run dry and turn to dust. Rice fields in Louisiana depend on controlled freshwater diversions. Without them, salt water creeps in and kills the crop. Soybean and cornfields along the lower valley rely on stable river elevation to recharge aquifers. If the water table drops, the soil collapses. 
And then there is the fertilizer corridor. Dozens of fertilizer plants along the river produce the nitrates and ammonia used in 91% of American crop fields. Those plants depend on river access for cooling water, input chemicals, transport of product. If the river moves, even by a few miles, those plants shut down, crop yields drop, food prices surge, export markets break, farm loans default, land values collapse, and it won't just be local. When the Mississippi changes path, the price of bread, rice, meat, and animal feed rises everywhere. From supermarkets in Chicago, to restaurants in Los Angeles, to street markets in New York. The Mississippi does not divide America into regions. It connects America into one system. If the river moves, the system breaks. Chapter 9. Mississippi River – Shipping Collapse Threat The Mississippi River is the spine of US logistics. Every day, thousands of barges carry grain, steel, oil, jet fuel, chemicals, construction materials from the Midwest to the Gulf and back again. The river is not just a waterway. It is the cheapest transportation system in the United States. One barge convoy can carry the load of 1,050 semi-trucks. If the river shifts course, the entire barge network collapses overnight. Ports in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Plaquemines, Reserve, St. James, Convent become useless. Export hubs go silent. Elevators stop loading. Terminals shut down. Steel and fuel shipments stall. The Midwest does not just lose a river. It loses its connection to the ocean. Rail systems are already over capacity. Highways are not built for this scale. Trucks cannot replace barges. The cost would be catastrophic. Commodity prices would spike instantly. Wheat, corn, soybeans, diesel, jet fuel, lumber, plastics. The river is not just water. It is momentum. The flow of goods, the circulation of industry, the bloodstream of the American economy. And if the river breaks into the Atchafalaya, that bloodstream clots and the economy feels the stroke. Chapter 10. Mississippi River. The Coming Decision. For now, the Mississippi stays where we tell it to. For now. But everything in the system, the water, the land, the pressure, the gravity, is pointing in one direction. And that direction is southwest. Toward the Atchafalaya. Toward a shorter path. Toward freedom. The Mississippi River is not just a body of water. It is a force older than borders, older than cities, older than memory. It carved this continent. It built civilizations. It erased them. It does not care about shipping channels, refinery zones, casinos, boardwalks, or carefully drawn state maps. It does not care where people decide a river is supposed to be. It will choose the path of least resistance. It always has. It always will. The only question left is not scientific, not geological, not economic. It is human. Will we make the decision on our terms, slowly, strategically, intentionally, or will we wait for the river to make the decision for us? Because one of those choices allows planning, the other begins with sirens, and silence is already running out. The Mississippi River is moving. Not in theory, not someday, now. We cannot afford to look away. If this opened your eyes, don't let the message stop with you. Like this video to push it into the algorithm. Subscribe so you don't miss the next update. And comment below, should we let the Mississippi shift or fight to hold it in place? Your voice matters because when the river moves, the nation moves with it.